Hello everybody, welcome to Red Tool House. Today we are going to shoot the bed liner finish on our utility trailer. And really anxious to get into this. Um, we actually lucked out, we have a day today that it is, well up at the house it's about 70 degrees. Kelly's got the windows open, enjoying a nice day. Down here in the valley, <clears throat> we have about a 15 degree temperature change. So it's in the, uh, it's in the high 50s probably. So looking at now that this is nice and warm and primered and cleaned and wiped down and everything, we're ready to go ahead and shoot our finish on that. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get started and uh, I'll detail it as we go through. Okay, for those of you that didn't see our primer video, I'll link to it here, but uh, we talked about the, the finish coat we were going to do. We shot an etching primer, just a typical automotive etching primer. I think I got it at Rural King. But I got from Liner Extreme, uh, company that uh, that we're dealing with here. They sent me a three gallon kit and it is a <clears throat> Polyurethane based bed liner kit that's tintable. We got it tinted red and uh, So we can have it match red tool house So we've got our, our surfaces prepped now Again those of you that watch the video you may be saying <clears throat> Troy how come you're not doing it up in the driveway where it's sunny and warm and bright and all that Obviously, Kelly didn't appreciate the primer uh, overspray on the driveway, um, which I don't blame her, but, you know, I built that house. I poured that concrete. Um, if I want to spray primer all over it, I'll spray it. I'm not scared of her. Not at all. Not sure she's not back there. <laughs> no. Um, actually, this finish needs to be out of direct sunlight. And... I've got some dappled light here coming through the tree, so I think we'll be okay there. So we need to be out of direct sunlight. We don't want to get the surface too hot. The, uh, the, the coating will kick too fast. But then also I need access to my large air compressor. Up at the house I just have a small 30 gallon up here. I have my big upright Ingersoll. So that's uh, why I'm running the uh, hose out of the back window of the workshop. So I can have my big air compressor here to shoot this. Uh, I think we need... Um, 90 PSI is what they recommend somewhere, I think 70, between 70 and 90. So Liner Extreme offers a three-part kit. It's really kind of a idiot proof. Well, we'll see. We'll see how idiot proof it is. So uh, we'll take a clean five-gallon bucket. We've got we basically have two kits to do the square footage that um, they that I wanted to do. They said, "Hey, won't we send you just uh, two kits, which is a th or, or a combined three-gallon kit?" So it's kind of like uh, two of everything. So it's a four-part mixture. Obviously, we have our our tinted base. So that's part A. Big letter on it says part A, and then there's part B, which is our. Um, I'm going to say since it's got flammable all over it, it's probably our thinner. <clears throat> it's another part B. Um, here we have a reducer, which is part C. And then part D is our rubberized bits. So there's a Ziploc bag full of um, all kinds of little rubber chunkies that will go in. So we'll, uh, we'll mix all this together and that'll be half of our kit. So we'll mix all that together. Should be able to get our first uh, kind of a base coat on because we want to come back and put a, a second layer on. Um, this will actually uh, dry to uh, pass tacky in about 15 minutes, they say. And then we can come right back and, and spray our second. So we've got, about a, um, we've got about a set time of 30 minutes. So when we put all this together, obviously the chemical reaction starting. We're going to get on it and get going. They included a gun as well. So here's the gun attached to my uh, compressor hose. I need to tighten it up a little bit, I think. Um, but it's, it's made just to have uh, the reducer can. Actually, when you pour everything into your bucket, get it mixed, then you pour it back into the reducer can, and it screws right onto the top, or yeah, it screws right on the top of the can, and that becomes your, your paint supply. So we'll as we spray that empty, we'll just... Fill it back up, spray, fill it back up, spray. So it's kind of a neat uh, neat setup. Doesn't make it too uh, too heavy, too cumbersome. And you don't have to provide your own gun. Yeah, this is obviously going to be a thick, with those little rubber bits and everything, this is not something you want to do with your own spray gun setup. 
All right, I'll, uh, I'm going to put a link below to Liner Extreme so you can check out their website. What I really liked about them and what led me in that direction was they have a lot of examples on their website of where people are using the bed liner, their bed liner material, not just for bed liners. Obviously, you know, here we're doing an entire trailer frame, but there's guys that have sent pictures in where they've done their entire vehicles, you know, like an off-road Jeep or, or some of those little mini trucks. Just There's all kinds of varieties. Uh, guys have used them for... Um, um, rock guards on the bottom of the rocker panels of their four by fours it's kind of a neat opportunity it expands beyond just standard bed liner material so i'll link to that you can see today's ppe we're just going to use a respirator um i can't wear goggles over my glasses and still be able to do anything so uh, if you do this i'd obviously recommend uh wearing goggles if uh you have any area that's obviously not at a spot you want undercoating or the bed liner material on then obviously tape it off or Covered up, plastic somehow, wrap it. We're going to shoot the whole thing. The only thing I'm covering up is the uh, coupler latch there, but everything else is going to get shot in red. So we'll see how that goes. Yes, and I am replacing the tires. Those of you guys that commented last time, I'm replacing the tires and the rims, so I'm not pulling them off. If they end up red, it's no big deal. One thing they recommend in the instructions is to not use a... A paint stir, like a, a drill based or a mechanical paint stir. If you get the chemicals blended too well, then that reduces your, your kick time. Uh, so it makes you have to move faster. So they just recommended just using a wooden paddle to just get it uh, mixed together. If you're looking at um, preparation, again, there's a lot of instructions on the website to talk about prep. The instructions come with it. But um, if it's a painted surface, maybe scuff it just a little bit and you're good to shoot. If it's bare steel, uh, fiberglass, those type of things. They recommend a, a primer for chrome, an etching primer, uh, plastic, um, uh, oh, yeah, a, a plastic-based primer. So it just depends on what you're shooting. But uh, typically, if you're going to use this for a bed liner or something like that, you're going to have an already painted surface there. So you're just going to scuff it up with a um, with some sanding paper or wax wax wheel. Good night, wire wheel. Or something to that degree. I can't talk and process at the same time, clearly. Okay, so here's our four ingredients. This is the color red we're looking at. Woo, that's sexy. I'm going to end up wearing most of that, I guarantee it. So we're going to start putting her together. I'm going to pour my part B into my gallon can. See if that'll help remove some more of this from the feel like a mad scientist here. This looks like a gut pile, day old gut pile from deer. <laughs> Put this down here before it ends up all over my side by side. Okay, and now the last ingredient is our rubber bits. This is just a tiny, almost looks like sand, but it's little bits of rubber. start stirring that up here. And when I'm done, this bucket will last 80 years probably. <laughs> All right.
<laughs> look like I murdered somebody. That is the craziest stuff in the world to shoot. I mean, that shoots like coagulated blood. Um, so I got one, one of my gallon kits gone through, so, so I'm halfway through my product. You can see I got a good bit of the trailer coated. And it's definitely going on a lot heavier than I thought it was. So my second coat will be a touch-up coat, and then of course get some of my underbelly stuff there that uh, gonna be covered up by the deck, but I still want to get a you know, rust protection coating on it. I'm gonna soak my gun parts while I'm uh, mixing. Well, all right, I think we, uh, I think we got her. I think we got most of it on the trailer, rest of it's on the ground, and then rest of it's on me. Um, obviously, if you do this, wear gloves. I cannot wear gloves. I can't even wear latex gloves when I do stuff like this. They just get in my way and mess me up. So uh, it's starting to come off. The rubber texture, though, I think I could, uh, I could catch footballs professionally. <laughs> I can't drop anything right now. <laughs> so when calculating my square inches, I figured that uh, this three-gallon kit would be plenty. And even when I talked to Liner Extreme, they said the same, that, yeah, that should be, uh, that should be plenty. Yeah, I skipped the axle. I'm not coating the axle. Um, but interestingly enough, obviously with spraying, your overspray is what you have to take into consideration. And there I had a uh, block in my air hose. So I had to run in and fix it. And of course, when I, by the time I fixed it, it, trigger was still depressed and it was spraying. So, anyway. so even with all of that, even got, uh, you know, obviously uh, underneath the rails, got underneath it really well. Um, some of you guys had commented about how I'm not doing anything underneath. Well, keep in mind, this is all angle iron. There's not, not a square channel anywhere. So when I spray underneath at this angle, I'm getting both sides. Underneath, the only real flat horizontal surface is um, underneath this portion of the rail, which I got down and got that. So uh, it should have a pretty good coating underneath. Obviously it didn't coat underneath the uh, coupler because I want the ball to work. I did uh, pretty good coating on my receiver back here, so I'll probably have to come back. I should have probably taped that off. I'll probably have to come back and scrape some of that out a little bit to uh, allow the actual hitch to drop down in there. Um, all in all, it's going to have a serious texture to it. And then this extra piece over here is the, um, is the bar that goes in the back. Once you put the boards down, then you put the bar back and weld it in place or bolt it. However, I'm probably going to weld it back since that's how it was. And then, uh, Got a really nice uh, black jack that E-Trailer sent me, so that'll look nice. And then, of course, the black toolbox will go there. Blacked out wheels. So the instructions say this should be dry to the touch in about 15 minutes. And it's actually getting pretty darn close already, even though I've some of these big bubbles are still kind of tacky. But it's curing pretty quickly. Now, granted, the 70-degree day doesn't hurt either. It really warmed up even down here in the valley by the time I got this done. Uh, a a full-time cure, the instructions say, is five days. So you want to keep it dry for five days. So I'm going to just wheel it around here, put it in the barn, and just let her hang out for the rest of the week. Let her cure, do all that kind of stuff. Won't be in my way. And uh, then we'll be ready to start putting uh, accessories on it and putting the, the wood deck on it. I'm really excited to get that deck going and uh, get it oiled and beautiful white oak that we've got for it. So again, I want to thank Liner Extreme for providing this for us and letting us give it a try. I really like it. Uh, man, that little, those little bits of rubber in there really add some extra texture to it, um, as they do to my hands and to the trailer. So really, I think this is going to be a really durable finish. Really excited about it. Uh, so really anxious to, uh, to show that off once it's all dry. And also I want to thank E-Trailer for making this whole thing possible. If it wasn't for E-Trailer sending us all these components, Helping us actually fund the remodel of this uh, 
of this trailer, I you know, obviously I wouldn't have been able to do it. So uh, be sure to check out eTrailer.com and also check out Liner Extreme. I'll have links below in the show description. All right, take care, everybody.